Hello and welcome to FightStillPro.com. Today we're going to answer a question about boxing glove sizing that we get asked all the time. Boxing gloves aren't sized according to hand size and we've seen a couple of things online where people are talking about measuring their hands and measuring from the fingertips to the wrist. This is frankly rubbish. Boxing gloves are there for two basic purposes. They're there to protect the hand and they're there to protect the person that you're training with. If you're sparring or even if you're doing technical drills, if you get caught flush in the face with a boxing glove, depending on the size of it, is going to depend on how much damage you actually do. So, boxing gloves are sized by the weight of the glove, not by the hand compartment size. However, there are quite a few major variations in hand compartment sizes across brands. So this is something that people get confused about and then they get given advice by various different parties, often which can be quite misleading. So what you need are some basic guidelines and then you need to get to know which brands kind of suit your particular individual size. Boxing gloves are like feet. You need to try on a bunch of shoes in order to find out which one basically fits you. Unfortunately, as most of the boxing gloves in the world nowadays are sold online, that's pretty difficult to do, so you've just got to go with the best advice you can. At Fight Store Pro, we have a good returns policy, so if you do need to change your set of boxing gloves, the best way to do things is to ring us up first, get some one-on-one -on -one advice, see if you can get the closest match, but if it all goes wrong and the, the glove doesn't fit you, then we can swap it out for something, something that does. So let's get started. Boxing gloves have two primary functions. A lot of people use a boxing glove as a bag glove more than they use as a sparring glove. Now this is quite common, it's done in the professional end of boxing as well. Boxing, when I say boxing, I'm encompassing Muay Thai, boxing, stand-up phase of MMA and kickboxing and anything in that kind of ilk. So I'm just you talking about boxing as in using your hands to put punch and attack with. We have a range of boxing gloves behind us which I'm going to run, run through some of the options and size ranges but it's quite common as I say to use boxing gloves for bag and pad work. It tends to be used in smaller sizes if that's the case or the primary function of a boxing glove is often sparring. There is also fight gloves. Fight gloves are usually 8 or 10 ounce gloves and they're a different breed to what's used in day to day training so let's not confuse that as well. So let's start with the weights and understanding the weights versus the person so to speak. So boxing gloves range from 6 ounce right the way through to 20 ounce. However the most common sizing are between 10 and 16 ounce and that's really what we're going to deal with today. A 10 ounce glove is generally a small glove and there are two basic uh, designs. Um, I'll pick out, pick out two here. This is an ABA style glove or molded on the old top 10. It's got a very, it's got a kind of a bulky end to protect more up the knuckle end and it's a very very narrow glove. Uh, this is this is what I would call an ABA style glove, Amateur Boxing Association style glove. Now, a 10 ounce glove should comfortably fit an adult male most of the time. So there you go. I'm six foot three. I'm six foot three. I'm about 95 to 100 kilos right now. I haven't been on the scales in a while, but 10 ounce glove will comfortably fit an adult male. You should be able to get a set of wraps on underneath that. So the sizing of the hand compartment has very little relationship to the sizing of or the weighting of the glove. So that's the first thing to really take note of. Now if I switch over this 10 ounce glove over here from Danger in Thailand, yeah, this is incredibly small. Yeah. Now this, I can get it on but it's not particularly comfortable for me. So if I was choosing a glove for bags and pads, yeah, this glove isn't going to work for me. They're both the same weight, 
They're both exactly the same weight. There's the 10 ounce on there. I'm not going to be able to show you the 10 ounce label because it's right inside there. But they're two completely different sizes inside the glove. The weights are the same, so there's my point about branding. You need to kind of get an idea about which brands work for you. This is an American made glove, I'm a big guy, so it's probably going to work for bigger people. This is a Thai made glove, where the average height of a guy in Thailand is about 5 foot 7, 55, 60 kilos. So, you know, they're going to make things a little smaller, and that goes across the range with Thai brands. We're going to come to Fairtex and, and Twins in a second. So that's, uh, that's something that happens an awful lot. Now, another 10 ounce glove I can bring out, and uh, I've randomly brought this one out. It could have been any one of a number of brands. This is a lace-up glove. This is primarily used for fighting. This is a competition glove. This is a 10 ounce. They also do them in 8s. You'll find that most major brands do their fight gloves in 8s and 10s to correspond with weight classes for boxing and uh, boxing and kickboxing, Muay Thai as well. So with boxing, your weight class will denote which size glove you need for competition. Now this is a very, very flat glove. You can see the profile is very, very thin and at the end, there's very little padding in the end. Yeah? The idea of this glove is when you make a connection here, there's not so much padding between the knuckle and the person's chin or head when you, when you make a connection. Yeah? Some of the padding, the padding is evenly distributed, so you get 10 ounces on the glove, so it corresponds with regulations. However, once you've put your, um, once you've put your surgical wrap on and it sets hard, you're essentially hitting somebody with a brick underneath your glove, which is exactly what you want in a fight. So these gloves can also be really, really good for pad work and bag work. Um, they provide decent knuckle protection in terms of their stuff, you're scuffing your knuckles, I'd advise putting a wrap on, and it's also worth noting you get a good deal of the hand protection on any glove at all, no matter what size you're using on your wrap. Yeah, so it's very, very important to get your wraps right. But different style of glove, perfectly usable for bag and pad work. Um, in fact, quite favoured for bag and pad work amongst pros, but not suitable at all for day-to-day -day training with partners because if you hit them, you're going to do some damage. So that's the smaller range gloves. 10 ounces would generally not be considered a big enough glove for sparring. I have seen it in certain clubs. Um, and this can sometimes change if you're using a lot of protective gear. People using full face head guards, bit of body protection might want to use the smaller glove to work on their range. However, in day to day normal sparring, a 12 ounce glove is considered the smallest glove that most people would use as a sparring glove. So in a second we're going to move on to the larger gloves specifically for sparring. Hello and welcome back to FightStillPro.com. The subject of today is all about boxing gloves sizing and what's right for your hands, what's right to fit you. We get asked this question an awful lot. If you're watching this video straight off the back of the last one, you'll know that we've covered the smaller sizes in the last video. So if you're needing to know about competition gloves, bags and pad work, then I would look at the last video. But today the subject here are sparring gloves. Now sparring I'm going to define as anything which involves contact with another person, whether it's technical or heavy sparring, anywhere in the middle, drills, so on and so forth. Technical work. Now, sparring gloves can go all the way from 12 ounce to 20 ounce gloves, but the most common sizes are 12, 14 and 16 and that's what we're going to mainly cover today, but I'll make a note about 18s and 20s later. Sparring glove comp hand compartment sizes are quite variable and this has got nothing to do with the size of the glove being 12, 14 and 16. That's to do with the brand's decision on the hand compartment. So what you may find just like on the last video, is that certain gloves brands will not fit you and certain glove brands will fit you. You'll also find that some 
some instructors will say buy brand X and they'll say that because it works for them it's not necessarily that they've really thought about this in great detail some have some haven't but generally speaking some brands will fit you some brands won't so it's worth trying a few out and seeing what kind of feels comfortable with you things to consider with a sparring glove the primary function of a sparring glove is to protect the person that you're sparring with not you so you got to consider that you got to think about that so think about what your weight is so if you're an 85 to 100 kilo guy and your primary spar par sparring partner is a 60 to 70 kilo guy you might be the same height just different weights then you might want to wear a glove that's bigger than the glove that he's wearing in order to help protect him more when you're landing shots glove hand compartment is a totally separate issue and that's the big emphasis that we've got to make here today we've seen things online where they're measuring kind of the, across your palm and from your fingertips your elbow in order to kind of come up with what size glove is right for you this is just hogwash you just ignore it it, it doesn't make any sense weight of the glove versus weight of the person is the only criteria you really want to be talking about here however as I say looking at the differences between the brands is definitely a consideration now when we're coming down to talking about protection for the person where the padding is on the glove makes a hell of a difference we've covered that in previous videos check out the one with Juan Cervantes about tie gloves and also check out some of the other ones we've done on boxing gloves that it'll go into much more detail the wrist setup, some have longer, some have shorter wrists. This is all going to make a bearing. But let's look at what a good boxing glove for a, for a particular person is going to look like. I'm going to pick out this S3 here from Revgear. This one I know fits me really well, so I know it's going to work in terms of showing you what a good fit is. Okay, so when I place the glove on, yeah, I'm just going to take my hand out for a second. This is where you want your hand. If you can imagine your glove hand is inside the glove right now, your glove wants to be approximately there in relation to your wrist. If it's there, it's wrong. If it's there, it's wrong. If your finger position is forced to there, it's wrong. You need it to be able to make a fist. So when I put my hand in, and I close my hand, so obvious I can't clench a fist like I would be able to close a, an open hand fist, but there's my wrist right there, that's where, that's where the palm meets my wrist, that is absolutely perfect position for my hands. Now I'm not saying that this is going to be perfect for everybody, but these are actually a very, very good fitting glove. Yeah. The length of the wrist works for me, but a shorter wrist cuff isn't necessarily wrong. It's just a, it's just a choice. But this wrist comes all the way back, it helps support keeping my wrist straight when I'm striking. My thumb is nicely locked in behind my fingers, so it's not going to get caught as I punch. And we've got the link up here. That is a great position for my hand inside a sparring glove. Now this is a 16 ounce glove. But a 14 or a 12 would fit me in this particular glove exactly the same. And that's worth noting. The weight of the glove isn't going to make that much difference to the hand compartment size. The hand compartment is all to do with the mould that the individual manufacturer make, uses to make that glove. It's just the amount of padding he puts around it afterwards which makes the difference between 12, 14 and 16. So note that note that the smaller gloves tend to have a slightly different hand compartment but once you get to 12 14 and 16 they tend not to i can't say that's true for everybody but it's true for most of them now I picked up the fairtex bgv1 it's a completely different design to this rev gear you can see on every stance there is albeit you know it's a boxing glove there's not the similarities kind of end there whereas if I pick up this Pro Box one for example the design is very similar very very similar indeed now yeah we look at these very very similar design so 
the hand compartment complete is the big deal here. Now this twins boxing glove, which is also a lace up, and we'll just talk about the difference between lace up and velcro in a second. This is also a, this is a sparring glove. This is a 16. This is a 16. Look at the difference in the size. Look at that. It's huge. It's an enormous difference between the hand size. Look at that. The Twins is by far a bigger glove, even though that this is a 16. And I could show you a 12 ounce Twins, which would be the same size as this Rev Gear 16. So don't necessarily think that the hand, this is the message, don't think that the hand compartment size, the overall size of the glove, is to do with the weight. That's my point. So we've got, I mean, I'm just dragging a Vertex 16 down just for comparison here. So we looked at, there's the Vertex 16 and the 12. You can see that there's less padding on the, on the 12. However, the overall size of the glove is my, yeah, it's close. It is slightly bigger than 16, but it's not, yeah, it's not a huge, huge difference here. So it's very important that you don't make that mistake when you're choosing your gloves. So let's just have a quick talk between the difference between lace-ups and, and Velcro. A lace-up glove obviously isn't as convenient. You can't take them on and off as fast. Um, you quite often will need somebody to help you put, take, put, certainly put them on and quite often get them off as well, especially if you're using the smaller sizes. Velcro is more convenient, you can get them on, on and off with unaided from anyone else. However, a lace-up glove, A, tends to cinch up better onto your wrist, you tie the race, race around this area, cinch it right up and will lock in better. And the other thing that a lace-up glove will afford you is it stops abrasions on your sparring partner from, from areas in the Velcro. Now, Velcro have done this very, very well and they've... Um, They've hidden the Velcro very, very well, which will minimise those abrasions and scratches. But any Velcro glove can give cuts to your sparring partner. However, if you're in any kind of class where you're having to take your gloves on and off on a regular basis during class, it's got to be Velcro most of the time. Um, if you're in the type of class where you're just going to spar or you're just going to do one thing for the entire session, then laces are going to work well and generally speaking will be the choice of professionals. Most professional guys I know choose lace-up gloves as their main sparring glove. So that's the difference between laces and velcro. There are some personal choices in there as well. A lot of people prefer the fit of lace-up gloves but I think if you're a beginner coming into the sport generally speaking I would buy velcro. So we're going to go right the way down to a 12 ounce glove and I'm going to bring in this little one from Pleto Reyes here as well. This is the one exception to this rule. This is technically speaking a bag glove, but it's been made as a boxing glove. Uh, we, it's got this funky lace and Velcro strap, allowing you to cinch up in the way that you can with laces, but you can use the Velcro to finish it off. It means that you can get them on and off fast if you need be, and don't have to use the laces, that's the idea. But this one, is a medium <laughs> and I hear you say hold on you just said that we can't use medium large XL well almost nobody does this is the one exception this is roughly equivalent to a 12 ounce glove so they've called it medium because it is technically a bag glove but I think most instructors aren't going to have a problem with you using this as a sparring glove it's certainly got as much padding as the Reyes sparring gloves and very few people would stop you sparring the Reyes sparring gloves. So, so, in summary, if you're wanting a gloves primarily for bags and pads, first of all watch the earlier video, but secondary, you might want the smaller sizing. It's perfectly reasonable to use a 14 or a 16 ounce glove on bags and pads. It's just you're going to make the job a little bit harder. It's heavier on your hands and the calibration between the space between your knuckle and the pad is going to be a little bit out. But there's certainly for fitness purposes, there's no problems at all in using those larger sizes. However, for sparring, 12, 14, 16 ounce gloves are considered sparring gloves. 
Generally speaking, there's big differences between the brands in the compartment size and that's the major factor in what gloves are going to fit you and what gloves are not going to fit you. So if at all possible, get the chance to try some on, try some on at the gym, take the best advice you possibly can and call us because we've got a lot of experience with this. I've talked to a lot of people through what's uh, going to work out best for them and uh, 9 out of 10 times I get it right. So, 12, 14, 16 ounce for sparring. I used to have a rule that if you're over 80 kilos it had to be a 16 ounce glove, over 70 kilos it had to be 14 and you could use 12s if you're under 70 kilos but every club can have different rules and regs depending on what they use for sparring so it's also worth checking which ounce glove you use for sparring with your instructor or with your club. Bags and pads, you've got lots of options, try a few on. Always go for something which is going to protect your hand primarily and don't forget that the wrap is hugely important for protection so it's not all down to the glove. I hope you've enjoyed this video and check us out at www.fightstillpro.com.